the government of, it, of Japan does not recognize any act that prejudices the final status of Jerusalem and the territories in the pre-1967 borders. That was one year ago, folks, March of 2010. Now, if you'll take this study out, then you'll find January of this year, on the 11th, they condemned the housing uh, of the Jewish people in East Jerusalem. Here is their official statement. They said it very clearly, talking about that they were going to tear down the Shepherd Hotel in East Jerusalem to build apartments because, as the Bible says, people would return to Israel and they'd set up their headquarters. Uh, and, and obviously, it says right here, and you can see the ambassador standing there as he's shaking hands with the, uh, not the prime minister, but the... Um, uh, yes, uh, thank you. The president of Israel said he had already informed Israeli government the, of the officials of the Japanese view. And then notice what he says. This is official statement from, from Japan. Japan once again strongly encourages both is Israel and the Palestinian sides to focus on the goal of a two-state solution. No. No, folks, no. You don't divide Jerusalem. You don't divide Israel. You don't mess with God's land. Well, then on February 10th, 2011, again, Japan does not recognize in any act that anticipates the final status of the territories of pre-67 borders of, for, nor Israel's annexation of East Jerusalem. Once again, their official statement, I'm just going to uh, trust that you uh, will have time to do this on your own, that was on February 10th. And then February the 28th, guess what happens? Japan turns around and signs an agreement of $1.1 billion to the Palestinians to help them with their next $32.5 million agreement. They go on to say that, uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, Palestinian Authority says that I single out the interests of the Japanese government and executing projects in Jericho and the Jordan Valley. They're uh, implemented uh, projects totaling $40 million and goes on talks and brags about how we, we, we depend on them so much. Well, now, folks, listen to this. After making it abundantly clear where Japan would stand regarding Israel, the very, on the very day, March 11th, the exact same day, one year later, after back-to-back -back approving of Israel for the building of its rightful land, the earthquake strikes. It was a 9.0. It followed by a 30-foot tsunami. What was interesting, it was so powerful that it moved Japan's land eight feet. God says, you want to move some land, dude? Okay. Let's, let's try it. Let's mean you, let's play. Matter of fact, Let's see, let's just shake the axis of the earth for a while. Okay? You want to talk this? I'll talk. Now, I want to tell you something, folks. The death toll is over 15,000 and with a total estimate of $309 billion. You want to help the Palestinians? You want to give them some money? Okay, we'll play that game too. Now, let me just tell you something, folks. You say, well, I'm not sure God sends earthquakes, John. Well, then you might want to talk to Korah and his family. When they rose up against the children of Israel and said, you don't have any right. The Bible says the earth began to shake and opened up and swallow Korah and his whole family and shut back up on him. Who knows? I heard a guy tell me the other day, well, I don't think God sends earthquakes. I said, what, what about Paul and Silas when they're in the jail? And you remember the, 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 the things fell off their arms and hands and the, you know, the do doors opened up? Well, I believe God made the chains fall off and the, earth, the, the, the doors open, but I don't think he sent the earthquake. Uh. <laughs> what does it say? In that day he'll make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves shall be cut in pieces, though the entire world would gather against it. Now let me just wrap this up. Everyone look at this. Every civilization, every nation, every empire that's tried to destroy Israel, every one of them stopped existing. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I think it's, it's so amazing to me. Do you all remember the day, the day that Osama bin Laden died? 
You remember the day? May the 1st. Does anybody remember the day that Adolf Hitler died? May the 1st. Is it any coincidence that May the 1st is a Jewish holiday? Isn't it funny that these guys wanted to rid the world of the Jew and there's no more Obama? I mean, Osama, sorry. Oh, that was a mistake. I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me for that one. Uh, there's no more Osama and there's no more Hitler, but the Jews are still around. You know why? Because the smallest of nations got the biggest friend. Amen. Let me wrap this up. Um, I thought it was, I was so stinking proud of our Congress on the 24th. I was like, man, thank you so much for showing support of Benjamin Netanyahu. What a gentleman. Dude, I wish that dude had a birth certificate from Hawaii. <laughs> I'm stepping over my boundaries. I am so sorry. <laughs> Fifty-six times Congress applauded Netanyahu. They gave him standing ovations well over a dozen times. I was so proud of him. But there was a, a, a statement that was made about Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem must remain the united capital of Israel. Boy, the crowd... The, uh, all Congress was clapping, except this one dude sitting behind the yeah. podium. Yeah. Seemed like his name was Joe. Yeah. Name? Joe. Yeah. The Vice President of the United States. Sits there yeah, sits there. You saw it too? Sitting there, just, yeah, just sitting there with his hand folded. Well, folks. Think. I mean, you know what? You really literally have to be way out of touch not to be able to figure this out. You know what? I think one of the most interesting things is the, the number one television shows now, there's dozens of them. They're all investigative type shows, forensics and stuff like that. You know, folks, there's something that God put in us that says, you know what? You need to start digging a little bit here. You need to check this out. You need to, you, need to, you need to study here. God knows our character's like that. You know, folks, you need to get off the, the fiction on the fantasy of the television and start thinking about reality. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you see this stuff happen, you've got to say, I'm wondering if there might be something to this. Amen? And then when he got to his conclusion... I love, I love that, that voice of his. That, I mean, um, what, a, what a, a very commendable man. Just, he says, may God bless you, and may God forever bless the United States of America. I mean, I just sent cold chills just saying that, right? Here's Israel coming to us after we did this to them over and over again. For the last 20 years, we've been doing this to them. And they just, he just... God bless you. God bless America. Now, let me just tell you, right after this was said, you know what ends up happening? The Palestinians said, you know what this is, don't you? This is a declaration of war. Now, I'm thinking, wait a minute. The only reason why I understood this is because I've had children. And you've heard how the kids act, don't you? They, they, if something doesn't go their way, they'll, they'll scream out some accusation. Especially if they're spoiled. Always used to get in their way. Just whine a little bit. Folks, you could, you could memorize that and you could never get a declaration of war. That man made it clear he doesn't want war. He wants peace. But you can't satisfy these people. I hate to sound prejudiced, but when it comes... Yes, that's exactly what it is. It is a... It is a, a debate that started in the womb of Rebecca. And God said, there's two nations inside of you, darling. 